Hi guys, welcome back to another tutorial. This one here is for painting tropical Falschenjäger. So, what I've got is I've got a uh, beautiful uh, metal Perry miniatures sculpt. I mounted it up on a 25mm base, uh, consistent with the rest of my army, and I've just started layering it up. So basically, what we could go for is a, uh, is a primer of any colour you like. I generally start from black, and I have, as you can see, uh, primed this off um, black initially. Um, it had a little bit of overspray from when I was doing something else uh, next to it in field grey. But um, yeah, so I've started to put some colours on. Alright guys, so the base coat that I've put down here, firstly for the trousers and the tropical pattern boots, is Vallejo model colour Burnt Umber. It's a nice solid colour of that. And for the smock, the base coat for that, will be the first colour in the Foundry Triad, number 29. The Moss Triad. So this is number 29A. Normally I'd move uh, onto the skin first, I like to paint inside out and I start off with the skin, but uh, if I'm going to sponge um, these, uh, these details or these scratches and damage onto the helmet, I really want to start with that, um, because otherwise I will end up with sponging marks likely over the painted face, um, the high points like the nose and the cheekbones and stuff like that, and I really don't want that. So I'm going to go away and do that. Um, as well as that, the next step I'm going to do on the smock is... I am going to get um, some Ethonian Camo Shade Wash from Games Workshop and I'm going to put it on over top of the smock. I'm going to layer up the trousers and the helmets and I'm going to come back and show you where we're at after that. See you soon. So here you go. So I've lightened up from beige brown into desert yellow going upwards to the apex of the helmet and also around the rim into pure desert yellow there. So now it's nice and finished. Um, apart from the chipping, I've got my sponge in my finger here. I'm going to lightly apply some uh, Vallejo Black Grey into a palette, gently sponge it in and sponge it onto the helmet. Hi, welcome back. So as you can see, I've lightened and layered up the uh, trousers and the uh, tropical shirt underneath the smock by simply adding uh, growing amounts of desert yellow um, from Vallejo Modic Color to um, the burnt umber. So layered it up, got it to a good place there now. I'll just rotate this around slightly so that you can see some more of that. Um, so there's nice deep folds in these trousers, uh, they were a looser fit, uh, you can see at the bottom as well, uh, sort of their laces, their tie ups and stuff like that there, um, so though there has all been sculpted in. Uh, left the uh, the tropical pattern boots, um, the burnt umber, and have just um, washed it with uh, Agrax Earthshade by uh, Games Workshop. And I paid a little bit of attention with the desert yellow and stuff like that, as I said, to the uh, the, the shirt underneath the smock. Um, so the helmet is done as we discussed uh, with that uh, sponge technique. Um, I've done my skin in my favourite sort of a uh, tropical or desert way. And um, the colours for that are quite simple. So here we go. Um, if you can get your hands on this old... Citadel foundation paint, a Talon Flesh, um, that's certainly my favourite, and I love the addition of this, uh, which is a great colour wash, um, much less red than uh, the current Games Workshop washes, and a lot of the washes out there, um, and I really like it, I think it gives a nice sort of suntan sort of colour. Um, now the skin is not finished, it's uh, not um, uh, not completely highlighted up or shaded down um, it's just that nice uh, mid-tones there now and the reason for that is because quite simply I don't want to uh, get it to a point where um, I, I'm unbalanced I think I'm finished and then the, I'll put the other colours, the highlights around the other cloth around it and then I need to do it more so just get it to that mid-tone then stop um, other thing I've done, uh, obviously I've highlighted up that smock as I discussed. So the colours for the smock are the um, uh, that moss triad, um, as we've discussed. Um, but now what I've done is, uh, after washing with Thonian Camo Shade, the uh, 29A, uh, which is the moss shade, 
I have applied another um, layer of that nice thin coat and uh, what it's done is allowed some translucency um, so underneath it I still retain the shades and then I have got 29B which is the mid-tone um, from that uh, um, that triad and I've applied it over the top and the last one is this one here now I hardly ever use um, this the, the, the highlight or the light shade 29C however what I do is I add some of this to 29B and I'm um, just putting it in there you can see that I have added some in and uh, just again nice translucent layers and um, put it around the smock there um, so now we've got the layers of the uh, Ethonian camo shade in the shade 29A, 29B and lastly I've got this um, little highlight of the, the 29B uh, and the, just a touch that 29C added um, to bring it up a notch. So that's looking good. So what I need to do now is I'm going to go on and uh, I'm going to paint uh, inside out from here on the smock. So I'm going to start by doing the, uh, the camouflage patterns. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by doing the, uh, the browns. And for that I'm going to need hull red. Uh, by Vallejo Model Color and I'm going to use, after I've uh, put those uh, patterns on I'm then going to use a combination of uh, Iraqi Sand and Flat Brown and a roughly 70-30 uh, um, for the, uh, the brown to the Iraqi Sand but I'll come back to that and show you that sort of a mix as I apply it I'll get a highlight, or wrong, I'll get the outlines of the uh, hull red on there first and uh, show you what sort of shapes we got because that's another thing that can confuse or um, I guess throw off people's uh, accuracy when I say accuracy that balance between uh, painting a miniature and the real thing and for this one here it is about getting nice angled straight lines on the camouflage pattern so I'm going to go away now and I'm going to start uh, by applying that uh, hull red it's going to look very red at the start but um, you can see the outline of the patterns and I'll talk about uh, what we do next then. Right, welcome back guys. So here we go. Um, this is the first step of doing the, uh, the splinter camo on our Falschenjäger's smock. So, as you can see, um, nice, crisp, square, okay, bits of camo. There is a... Uh, there are plenty of uh, sources you can get some reference from online. Um, you can see the way that it stops some of the joins in the fabric um, being cut out of fabric, not uh, printed over top of the um, uh, the fabric when it, once it was assembled. So not too much, and staying away from doing both shoulders, uh, both lapels, um, and all that sort of thing. There we go, we can see how it is. So of course the hull red looks a little shiny at the moment with uh, all the lighting and uh, stuff like that. Um, however, what we're going to do now is, and it does look very red, is we are going to put an inner highlight to it. Okay, so we're going to um, mix it about 70% uh, flat brown, 70 to 80% uh, flat brown, and about 20 to 30% of the Iraqi sand. And we're going to go on the inside of the shapes, and we're going to leave um, some of the outline. Yeah, now doing this, slightly unrealistic, yes. Uh, better to the eye for a miniature, um, yes. Um, looks very satisfying and if I haven't uh, put too many brown patches on here too much of the brown splinter um, we have to remember that we haven't done the webbing yet to the equipment so this is going to look quite busy once all that uh, equipment's um, done up on it and especially uh, looking at the back but uh, the front is the same people sort of don't realize how quickly that fills up once you've done the belt um, you sort of the cross strap um, for one of the uh, bits of equipment there we've done the um, we do the webbing yoke and stuff in there as well and the rifle so um, don't fill it up too much before you do any more work in it but we're going to get in there now we're going to get in there with that mix and we're going to fill in all these shapes 
we're going to be uh, get a nice uh, pointed brush in there. We're going to fill them all in, and then when I come back, we'll have a look and see what it looks like then. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Here we go. Welcome back. So we can see at the end of that stage, we've now filled in our uh, splinter cam, the brown pieces, and just zooming in there, you can see how I have left the outside of those shapes in. Well, I filled the inside of those shapes in while still leaving the outside, the hull red, visible for a nice outline. So what we're going to do now is we are going to grab ourselves another couple of colours. We're going to do the green part of the splinter cam now. And for that we're going to grab two colours. And the first one is, there you go, this uh, Luftwaffe camouflage green. And the second one is going to be, and both of them are almost empty, so they're upside down on my workbench. Here we go, the next one is this golden olive. There we go, as soon as it comes into focus. There we go, golden olive. There's a number for it there, again, Vallejo model colour. And we're going to place this on again in small patches. Okay, we're not going to go over the top. So the ratio we're looking for is around oh, 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 of the brown to the green. Probably a bit more like 2 to 1. We want to have at least one edge of the green touching, or any green uh, sort of splinters that we put on, touching one of the brown ones or... Um, coming from an edge uh, off a fold, say, so by that I mean maybe the edge of a pocket, uh, the edge of the smock itself, um, something like that, um, where it's sort of indeterminate, but we want to have the majority of what we can see, uh, if it's not overhanging the edge, we want to um, have it so that the green splinters are touching at least one end of a brown splinter. And if you can get them uh, joining up every now and then, and that's, um, that looks really pleasing too on a larger piece of fabric. So we're going to use the, uh, the Luftwaffe Cam Green as the base, just like we did with the hull red. Okay, then we're going to fill it in using around 80-20 uh, in favour of the Golden Olive. So 80-20 of the Camouflage Green, the Luftwaffe Cam Green, the darker colour, um, being the 20%. And the olive, golden olive being in the 80%. So a nice um, golden olive sort of colour with that darker outside. Um, just like we've done with these splinters of the brown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you the finished result. So see you soon. Alright, welcome back. So we have done our green splinter on the camouflage on the smock now. Let's zoom in. So you can see um, we've gone that 80, 20 mix, getting that golden olive color coming through. You can see now, yeah, we haven't overfilled the uh, smock because once we fill in that uh, webbing, um, the rifle and stuff like that. Okay, we're going to end up with uh, plenty of busy stuff going on there. We don't, make it make, we don't want to make it overly busy. Um, lots of webbing equipment on these guys back as well. So there you go, you can see um, we've filled in that golden olive, leaving the, uh, the Luftwaffe Cam Green outside on the edge. Really nice, pleasing to the eye. Now, Decision point for you. What you could do is you could at this stage decide you're going to do the uh, the raindrop streaks on it. I have to say that for myself, I don't do that. Yep, none of the miniatures which you see in our uh, book, the Battle of Primusol Bridge, have been um, completed that way. Uh, I think that simply at this scale, yep, um, it can be done. It can be executed really well, by the way. Um, but I personally don't think it adds uh, that much to the miniature. Um, so what I do is I just leave it as it is there now, and that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to concentrate on the equipment. So, uh, these guys are going to be wearing a mix of uh, basically Western 
Europe um, leather, uh, equipment, webbing yoke and stuff like that and the tropical pattern, the uh, sort of the canvas um, webbing yoke and if we look at the, uh, the back of this guy okay you can see there now we've got the, uh, the canteen, the mess tins um, the canteen bread bag, we've got the, uh, the gas canister case in, uh, in uh, desert yellow I've got a poncho rolled up and we've got a mix of the canvas webbing yoke uh, the black belt and uh, rifle ammunition pouches and so on and so forth so we are going to paint that guy up like that the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attack that um, that webbing and the belt we're going to be painting inside out okay so the uh, the, the yoke um, I'm going to do the same again so I'm going to get in there with uh, nice canvas colors so it's going to be um, uh, dark mud and dried mud uh, maybe with a little um, highlight on top of that um, we're going to get in there with a the black on the uh, on the belt and the weaving pouches um, and to simulate that uh, a lot of it's going to be highlighted especially on the weaving pouches uh, for the rifle ammunition with a uh, with black grey by Vallejo and then we'll put a black wash over top of it so picking out the uh, basically the flaps in it as well going to the back Okay, we're going to have a desert yellow on the uh, the gas canister, gas mask canister there. Uh, we're going to get into the mess tins in there, and we're going to have them olive green colours um, with a black band around it. We're going to get some uh, some nice uh, splinter cam on there on the rolled up poncho, and we're going to get uh, flat brown over top of flat brown highlights over top of a uh, <clears throat> burnt umber base for the um, the canteen as well. So that's the sort of colours we're going to end up with. So I'm going to go away. I'm going to paint that up for you now. And um, yeah, as I say, we'll do that webbing, the belt, and stuff like that first. Then after that, I'm going to get stuck into the uh, the bread bag. I can give you a few colours for that. I'll see you back soon. Hi, welcome back guys. So we're almost there. So you can see now there's our uh, equipment on the webbing all painted up. Uh, Re-highlighted things, um, put a little bit of dried mud over top of the khaki on the, uh, the canvas webbing straps. Um, highlighted as I said uh, all the various types of equipment on there. Uh, Re-highlighted again the, uh, the water bottle and canteen strap. Uh, just turning it around, you can see um, painted up that uh, that poncho. Uh, the salt barn is as discussed. Um, just used uh, charred brown, so a darker brown, so um, to stand out the straps from the actual pattern on the salt barn itself. Um, and if I just go around to the front of the model here, you can see on there that. Uh, just highlighted up the metal parts a bit um, just to gain those scratches on the bluing and uh, yeah so we're, we're really close we are really really close what we are going to do is I am going to take this guy now and I am going to uh, finish off highlighting up the skin so I'm going to reapply some Talon flesh um, on the knuckles uh, high points of arms, face all that sort of stuff and then I'm going to mix it with some pallid witch flesh and I'm going to re-highlight on the extreme highlighted place so uh, tips of the nose, the cheekbones uh, a tiny bit on the chin um, top of the forearm and the uppermost knuckles there on that, uh, on that hand that's cocking his rifle so those points there then I'm going to base it uh, so uh, for that I'm going to use uh, the Geek Gaming Scenics uh, Mediterranean um, basing um, and uh, I'm going to put that on there uh, as you can see I've got my base color on there um, can pretty much be any sort of golden brown sort of a color uh, I used Heavy Brown by uh, Vallejo Game Color um, it's one of my favorite colors for sort of like a Mediterranean uh, base color around the edge of base so I'm going to base it up 
and then I am going to come back and I'm going to show you this miniature all finished. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed the trip so far. Let's finish off together um, and we'll come back and we'll review how we got on. See you soon. All right. So thanks for joining us guys, I hope you've enjoyed the journey as we've painted this guy up. You can see my finished results here, and hope yours are looking similar, uh, probably better. You can see now the room that we left on the uh, the smock, putting the splinters on, gave room for the equipment, the cross strap, the webbing yokes and stuff like that, uh, the webbing itself, so that we can still see some of the base pattern underneath the base colours. And going into the back you can see the amount of uh, equipment there is quite a lot on this particular model. You can see the way the Zeltbun or Poncho cam looks different to the actual splinter cam. Again going around to the side, you see how the splinter pattern has left room for the smock colours to be revealed underneath. And you can see the way that the, uh, the tropical trousers have been layered up as well. And that's it guys, I hope you've enjoyed this journey painting your force up. I've really enjoyed showing you how to get this guy done. I hope he's going to face off uh, with the rest of your army against some British, uh, maybe for the Battle of Primusol Bridge, or somewhere else in the Tropical Theatre. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon.